All right, wrapping up my revisited reviews of Paranormal Activity. Uh, this is Paranormal Activity, the ghost mission. You can't really see it. I'm trying to. I have this light on. Hold on. Let me get started. I might have to take the light bulb up. Hold on. Help a little bit, me a little more light. Little bit. Um, yeah, so we're talking about paranormal activity of the ghost dimension, which in my original review, I gave a 8 out of 10. Okay, um, it's not terrible. But rewatching this again, I did get kind of, you know, I was like, oh, I wonder what I gave this. And then it's like, oh, you get, I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. Because I gave a 9 out of 10 to the other one, which I still say is pretty good. This one went down for me. Um, and it does that. I rewatch and stuff. I have watched these after I did the reviews, obviously. And I like this franchise, so I have watched them, but. I usually watch four, five in this one, and that's why rewatching three. I have rewatched three once since I've done the review, so watching it again, it's gone up. But this one has gone down, and yeah. So uh, this was the big one. The one to end the franchise, end the, sto the storyline with the Katie and the Christie and stuff, because the next one, spoiler alert, has nothing to do with Katie and Christie and any of this stuff. So this is the one that ended it all. And it was in 3D, which makes no sense. Although I do like, and I've, I've heard stories, I didn't go to see it, but um, if you went to the theater and watched this in 3D, the movie is basically a regular movie until the supernatural stuff happens, that's in 3D, so... But right away, we start off with the death of Dennis from part three, and we get a retcon where she, Larry Malois takes him upstairs, and there's a dude with a ponytail who's never addressed as to who he is, but he's up there, and that doesn't make any sense because we know that there was no one else. I mean, there was those ladies out in the garage, but other than that... There was no one else upstairs. It was just Dennis and the mom. I forget her mom. Julie. Dennis and Julie were the only ones upstairs. Because they came out. Like, Dennis comes out. Julie gets thrown down. All of a sudden, there's a dude in another room upstairs. I'm assuming it's Grandma Lois' room. And she kind of cut some stuff later in the film. We find out later this dude was training Christy to see into the future. To see where Toby is in the future, and she's at this house with the fleeges, and she can see into the future, I guess. And we also find out from Ryan and his brother, who are watching these tapes, that Katie and Christy are being raised by this cult now in their house, and they're calling some other woman mom. A lot of people say that they're they're calling Grandma Lois mom, and that that throws off a couple of things. Oh, well, you know, you know, this is supposed to solve the mess up from the first, you know, the first one, they said, you know, oh, well, well your mother, Mika says, uh, well, that's not about your mother over, and then she dies in the third one. They're like, oh, wait a minute, this is supposed to, oh, look, they're calling someone else mom. They're hypnotized to leave someone else as their mother, which means that the, which would also imply that the coven still has a stronghold on this family, um, I guess. But also, it's a lot of people, I don't know if they full up say that she's calling, like they don't know that it's Grandma Lois, but if they watch the tapes, there's a one point where she shows up and it's obviously that she's Julie's mom. So if they didn't get to that tape, then they would know, but it's, implied as Grandma Lois, or a lot of people think it's Grandma Lois, that would also throw 
a wrench, in, like, in another thing at the beginning of Paranormal Activity 3, because the character was going to be shown, that they mentioned Grandma Lois. So, that doesn't make any sense either, but you can also think, hey, it's just some random cult lady who's old enough to be their mother, pretending to be their mother, they've been hypnotized, and that could make sense. But I don't know. Anyway, we cut to 2013, where we have the Fleege family who are living in this big house, and we get an error right away, because Leela, the little girl, she said she draws a picture of her Uncle Mike. In the picture, it has a mustache. But when he walks in, they're surprised about his mustache. Oh, what's that on your face? So they didn't know he had a mustache before they came. Did Leela? Is it a mess up or has she seen the future? Did Toby tell her that her Uncle Mike is coming and he has a mustache? I don't know, but then they make fun of it and stuff. It's really weird. We're introduced to the characters, Ryan, who is Mike's brother, uh, his daughter Leela, his wife Emily, and their friend Skylar, who is there on some kind of yoga retreat, even though if you go on a yoga retreat, you should go to some kind of spa or something. I don't know. Her role is just to be another character that doesn't really do anything. There's a few scenes with her. I think she's sort of a love interest for Mike, but they never really do anything, you know? Yeah, and then going through some stuff. Um, although, I watched the extended version this time. I don't think I ever actually watched the extended version, because there's a scene in the beginning where they show the Santa Claus costume that would be used later, which, which shows you where Toby got the Santa Claus costume for the freak out later, but... I think it's even creepier that they don't that you don't know where they got it from. So that's interesting. But you know, and they go through some stuff. They find a camera, which I think is a paradox or whatever you call it. It's a loop. It's a loop, and I'll explain that at the end. But I think it's an item that gets looped. Like it just it keeps going through a loop, and I'll, I'll explain when I get to the end. But I find this camera that has a weird spectral thing and then there's a bunch of tapes and there's a bunch of tapes where they you know they look and it's the tapes that were stolen in part three at the beginning and everything that we saw in part three but obviously they don't watch all of them because or at least we're never told they watch all of them because there's they're watching a bunch and then there's other tapes that we didn't see before and again, I pointed to the beginning, like, if something happened after the end, after Dennis is killed, why did we see that? If it's happening right after the events, on the same tape, why weren't we showing it? It just doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense to me. It's very confusing. But, uh, yeah, so he starts going through the tapes. He's a VHS player. Ryan does because apparently he took all his dad's old porn tapes and he needed it. Like, we needed a reason why he had a VHS player. I don't know. <laughs> Not needed. But yeah, Christy starts to talk about stuff that's in Leela's room, like the butterfly or the bird over the uh, window, the tent. And yeah, it starts to freak him out. And then later we get where he talks about there's two brothers. And then she sneezes. Leela sneezes and Christy, Christy says, bless you. And they start to do more investigations and stuff like that. And that's pretty cool. I like the whole investigation thing. I think I said this in my original review, but I liked it. This is a found footage movie that's about finding footage, you know? Because I, I think, you know, like, uh, Marvel Hornets is very good at going through footage and stuff. Like, we don't see them going through the footage, but we have a narrator through typing telling us, Oh, I found this, I found this. It's, it's, it's like that, but different. And I like movies. Oh, I found this footage. However, I do, I think they run to a wall with the, why are we filming this stuff? Because the beginning of this, I can see it. They're filming it because Uncle Mike's coming and they're going to scare him. But then they just continue to film things. And don't really give a reason. I mean, once the paranormal activity starts to happen, I guess they keep filming for a reason, but they just have the camera around all the time. And there's not really a known reason. Like, 
Here's one. Here's a scene where Mike and Skyler are outside. Mike says, oh, I'll go and get some wine, and they set the camera down, and she's just standing there. Why are they filming this? Why are they filming her standing there waiting for... That, that doesn't make any... That, that there's no reason to film that. And then they find... Okay, so this is the first film in which all of a sudden the demon wants, like, to get rid of everything that is, like, biblical, everything that's Christian, everything that has to do with the Bible, the church, and everything. But that hasn't happened in any of the other ones. Like, I know there was a, a psychic guy in the first one, but there was no real a priest, I don't think. And they never called a priest in before, and it was never someone trying to get rid of all the stuff before. It's just really weird that they do it. And maybe someone said, hey, you know, they never did that before, let's do it now. But you're going to do it now, in the sixth and supposedly final entry in your franchise? I don't know. I don't know. And even you, Jesse's grandma was a very religious woman. Martine, in the second one, was religious. She had the stuff. And yes, she got kicked out, but it wasn't the demon that did it. It was the, the dad. So I don't know. I don't know. It's really weird. Really weird. But yeah, we decided that now is when we're going to do that. Um, it's like they took everything from previous installments. Oh, hey, there was that woman doing the stuff. Let's just go over religious, get rid of all the religious stuff in here, you know? Oh, hey, um, there was that door in the fifth one, the Child of Time. Let's just do that. Let's, let's not do a regular door. Let's have it write the things on a wall and create a door, which makes no sense because it's got to be an actual door. They, they said that in the marked one. Also, this movie doesn't answer any questions. Like, how come the witches and the marked ones are different than the others? What happened to Allie after... You know, certain things. Why isn't she doing anything? Um, what happened to Katie and Hunter? And no, I will not accept Hunter as a 1992 as an answer. Because it doesn't answer where Katie is. Other than we get a mention that their uh, real estate agent's name was Katie Hubbard. Although why they don't... Why Ryan doesn't put two and two to fucking gather, I don't know. Her name is Katie. What if she's the same Katie? That's all you need to do is have a line. It's like, wait. You know, you find out the cult is orchestrated you living here. Or the cult, the coven, whatever. It's orchestrated you living here. You know Katie and Christy are the girls that are taking. You know that they have a, that the, that the cult had a stronghold on them. And you know that Katie has been missing since God who knows when. And you're... I know it's a stretch to think that, wait, her name is Katie. We know we've been set up. What if she's the same Katie? But they, if, if Ryan had just dropped that line, it would have been better. But he doesn't. He doesn't acknowledge it at all. And it's, it's very annoying. But yeah, skipping through a bunch of stuff that doesn't really matter. Talking and pointing out stuff on cameras. They realize that they find Hunter... In 1992. So Ryan and Mike, they go to police station and they find the information on it. And they point it out that he's there. That he should be there. But he's there. And I did mention my other review, but in the deleted scene, they do find that <clears throat> um, we do find out in a deleted scene that Leela, they find Leela in 1992. So, but like I said before, I think it was a good idea to let it out because it tells you, hey, this isn't going to work no matter what you do. We're still going to win. So at least it gives a little bit of hope even though it's a found footage movie, so who knows. Uh, but, yeah. And, um, <clears throat> Yeah. Uh, uh, hey, uh, I'm back on and I'm out you. Yeah, so. <clears throat> they find him in 1992, and there's all this panic all of a sudden. And I wonder if it's because they found the tape with Dennis's death on it. There's a, there's a, but I don't, we never 
are told that and they never say it. And there's there's even like like it skips over like they just watch random tapes like oh there's tapes of them with the family and the family's gone there was some cult in their house and calling some other lady mom and yeah it's like why would they watch them in order I know they're probably not marked but you think Dennis would have marked them you know the marked tapes <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so they call the priest in. Layla tries to bite the priest or bites the priest, whatever. Layla, whatever. And then, so, I'm confused at one point, and it's always confused me. Layla, we see Layla go through the door. And then they freak out because she's gone, and then she's back, right? But it's not done because she goes in later. So why did she go through the door earlier in the film? If she just does it at the end, and that's when they do the thing. It just it doesn't make any sense. What was the purpose of her going through earlier in the film? Because they realized, oh, uh, it's too early for this to happen. They just show her go through, and nothing happens. Take that scene out. We don't need to see her go through the, the door with still, like, a half hour of the movie left or so. Why? Just take that scene out. You don't need it. Let's talk about the the activity, shall we, Toby? So they promised us now you will see the activity and it's CGI. CGI. You yeah, know, I admit when I first saw the saw the first one, I was like, "What is this? This isn't scary." Doors moving. Ooh, what is going on? And why aren't we seeing stuff? Why aren't there demons or whatever? But if this is what they were gonna give us, I'm fine not seeing anything. <laughs> but uh, yeah, there's like weird CGI jello stuff like when he moves through, and like oh, I do want to point something out. The scene where Ryan finds that there's something in the middle of his living room and he goes to walk in, into it and stuff. Leela goes to walk away. And she kind of goes off to the side, as if she knows. It's very quick. You could, you gotta pay attention. But you can see when Leela goes to leave, she doesn't go right through it. She goes to the side, like she's, like she's moving to the side so she can get through. I almost like she knows that Toby is there, and I like that. It's very quick. It's very subtle. But if you pay attention, you can see it. I like that. So let's get to the end of this film because I'm honestly tired of talking about this film. But um, to the end, the priest shows up and they do a ritual which backfires, resulting in the deaths of Mike and Skyler. Ryan dies and then Emily takes the camera into the door. We find out that Toby, this has all been about getting the blood of Leela because she was born on the same day as um, Hunter. And, apparently. And their blood can bring him back, make Toby human, I guess. But why would you want to be human? You're a demon. You can't die. What do you want to be human for? I don't know. And it would be interesting if that human ended up being the ponytail guy. And that... I don't know. But it's not. And we never find out who the ponytail guy is. We don't see what Toby looks like. We don't know. And the mom dies, of course, and... Yeah. And the loop. The loop. The camera is in a constant loop. The camera is found by Ryan, left in the past by Emily, and then the cult puts it in the box so Ryan can find it later. It goes in a loop. It's a paradox, paradoxical loop. It just keeps happening. No matter what, that's what happens. Which means Toby will always become human. No matter what, it is always meant to happen. That, that's what that is. Uh, but, yeah. That's what it seems like to me. And that's what makes sense, at least. Uh, there is an alternate ending where 
to actually succeed in what they're doing with the priest. And then it cuts to later, and Emily is pregnant, and uh, Leela says she wants it to be a boy. The ponytail guy shows up and says, that's my girl, and they don't notice him for some reason, and then they blow out the candles. It is implied, I guess, by people, or at least what I read, that the baby is supposed to be Robbie? Which doesn't make any sense because it's 2013. But hey, we got time travel now, so we can just do whatever we want, right? But yeah, the baby is Robbie. Apparently, after he's born or so, he'll be kidnapped and taken back to 2000. He'll be kidnapped, raised till he's like, what, 8, 9? However old it was. Taken back to 2011 so they can recruit Hunter. But all this doesn't make any sense if you don't lose Hunter after the second one. So it just doesn't work. I don't know, they tried to fill in answers with this film and it just raises more questions. Like, why is this... We have to base this film on an entirely different family. Why? Because Leela, the daughter, was born on the same day as Hunter. But why didn't you just... I get it, with found footage, it's not easy just to pick up with characters from the other film. But I had a better idea. How about this? We have a private investigator who's investigating the Featherston case. He has all the tapes from the first, the second, and the third film, and he's been given tapes from the fourth and the fifth because they are somewhat connected due to what's on the tapes. And he has gone through all these things, and he's the one who has been showing us this footage in the previous films, or they. Over five or six years, who knows? And he's dragging it down, and he has a camera on, you know, someone holding the camera so he can record his investigation. There you go. And then you give us answers as he's going through and trying to figure out what's going on. You give us answers. You could bring in a cult raising Christy, you know. Who knows? Christy and Katie, whatever. You could... That seems like a better way than just some random family so we can say, oh, we get her blood and Hunter's blood to make Toby human. It just doesn't work. And this movie, the reason why I don't hate this movie is because I find it enjoyable. I like the characters. I think they're fun, if somewhat not important, but I think they're fun to watch. I like Mike and Ryan's, you know, they're supposed to be brothers, and they come off as brothers. You know, I like it. I like their, their interactions. I like the characters. And it's not a bad film. To me, Paranormal Activity that goes to mention is a middle of the road film because while I like some of the aspects just everything they tried to answer just doesn't work and it just raises more questions than it does answer and that's why it's in the middle of the road so yeah um so I'm I'm gonna do a ranking I will be in my regular spot for the ranking and I'm gonna rewatch my ranking and see how I ranked it back then and if it's changed it probably has but until then make sure to like share and subscribe thanks for watching I've been Scotty, and I'll see you in the next one.